This is Equip and Engage, a podcast by Subsplash, exploring how ministry, technology, and innovation come together to equip churches around the world to engage their communities. Hey, welcome to Equip and Engage. I'm Chris, part of the team here at Subsplash, and I'm excited to be bringing us back into the conversation of our series, See the Good. We're having conversations with pastors, leaders, and others who are experiencing really positive stories of change in the midst of some unprecedented global circumstances. And today, I'm joined by our guest, Ken Weigel, strategist at The Bible Project in Portland, Oregon. Ken, welcome. Uh, Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, Chris. Yeah, it's awesome to have this conversation with you. Good to connect with you again. I know we've talked a few times in the past. I'm just glad yep. to see you again. So as we, yeah. as we jump right in, just to hear about you know what you're seeing in the midst of these circumstances, I'd love just to kick things off by hearing a little bit about you and your role at the Bible Project and just what the Bible Project is all about. Yeah, the Bible Project uh, is a nonprofit ministry that makes uh, videos that help explain the Bible as a unified story that leads to Jesus that um, our library now is over 145 videos. Um, yeah, wow. Most people are familiar with our English library, um, but we actually have them in Spanish and, and, and Mandarin and uh, Portuguese and, and this whole about 15 other languages as well. And so we actually have been this online ministry for the last like probably six years since we started mm-hmm. um, that put content out in the, you know, the World Wide Web for free with no ads and just allow people to be able to use it within their context of their family, individual ministries. And so, yeah, I've had the privilege of being around since the very beginning, just helping. Um, I don't, don't draw, don't, don't write any of the videos, but just kind of help, uh, help us make some strategic places of where we can be and what we can be doing. And so I've just had the privilege of just being connected with this ministry over the last number of years um, from, the opportunities we saw back then when this whole thing got started, as well as the opportunities that we see now in the midst of um, the challenges that we're facing as a country, as well as a world um, when yeah. the, when, when the church goes digital. So yeah, yeah it's been, absolutely. It's been well, I mean, we're big fans of what you're doing in the Bible project, such awesome content. I know I person personally benefited from it and know many others who can say the same thing. So love what you yeah. guys are doing. It's huge. Yeah, uh, I just, I mean, I'm, I'm the same way. Like each yeah. video that comes out, I'm like, I did not, even when my kids like watch videos that or we'll read a book of the Bible and they're like, dad, can you explain this? I'm like, let's just go back to the video. Cause this is where daddy learned it as well. So it's yeah. been, it's, I've been as much of a influence by it as anybody as well. So it's been pretty, it's been fun just to be able to have something that impacts you be something that you help share with the world. Yeah, that's huge. I love that. Well, let's just jump right in to hear more about what things are looking like for you and the Bible project right now and really what stories you're hearing and your circumstances um just to start things off you know where where are you seeing the good in your surroundings and even in in the world right now yeah i mean i think i think really you know in times like this i think we see a real creativity with people as they as we really we focus on the most important thing generally and i think that's one of the greatest things that moments like this allow us to do is yeah. to really focus on what's important and to be able to be creative about how we do that. Because the missions that most of us were about still remain critical, but how we do that mission in these challenges, all of a sudden I just believe it brings out the creativity that God's put within us to be able to look at things with fresh mm-hmm. eyes, to be able to look at things from a different perspective. And so old norms and old forms will often stop. Yeah. And we begin to really examine in light of the mission, what can we do differently that we've never done before? And, and I think the other thing that is so encouraging about this season is from as far and as wide as I can see, there is a genuine desire to help. Like where yeah. there is this feeling that we're all in this together. Um, there's, a, there's a saying that they say astronauts feel when they go out to space and see the world connect. It's called the orbital perspective where they see yeah, the world right. as all united. Yeah. And there's something about this moment that feels relatively like that, where we're actually understanding this isn't, this isn't a, a, a weather event or, or an issue that happened in a particular region of the world. It's happening yep. globally. Mm-hmm. We're all in this together. We're, all, we're much more connected than we ever understood before. And so I think that there's a part of that that we want to be connected, that we want to help one another. And so the number of ministries that I've seen that are looking at how can I help? What can I do? How can I be part of the, an overall solution? Um, is just great. And I just think, I think the, the amount that that common good has really gone into even the businesses around us. I mean, you're hearing about pizza shops that are giving away free lunches to school, to yeah. kids that are, you know, vulnerable families, to, to all these things that just, it, it feels like just who we are rooted as the Imago Dei, as the, 
people made in the image of God, of us wanting to, to be creative, to jump in, to help, and to be people that helps restore and bring together just that kingdom living has just been fun to me, just be able to watch and see. Yeah, I totally agree. What a cool kingdom perspective to have. And I love that uh, vocabulary I just picked up orbital perspective. I don't think I'd heard that before, but that's just a really cool picture of really what a lot of us are seeing right now. That's sweet. Yeah. Well, you mentioned just uh, what it means to need to innovate and be creative in times like these. So I'm curious to hear, you know, how you're seeing people in general, or even your organization, maybe it's within the Bible project. How are you seeing people adapt and change for the better in all of this? Yeah, I mean, we weren't a big uh, work at home uh, group. We were, we have a pretty fun office. We put a lot of effort into our office. And so it was actually one of those really, it was an unusual thing for us to to lean into. The idea from working from home, I think some groups were really like eager. I think we were a bit resistant. We actually like really loved seeing each other. We loved all of our little workspaces. It was this really conducive, creative space. And all of a sudden a bunch of people are like, I'm in my basement. Like, how do I do this? You know, and it's just really different. And so we had to really learn uh, how to work together in that way. So we had a lot of the processes, we had a lot of the systems, but we began to have to trust those systems and processes even more. Um, Communication really had to get on the upswing. All the things that would normally happen via a water cooler conversation um, had to happen in different ways. Um, I think that the really great thing is it really made us really focused. It it allowed us to, where, where you might, at the time have had a whole bunch of people working in kind of different areas and different ways. It really yeah. made us as an organization go, what are our top priorities? What does it look like? And so communication increased, trust increased, and just the ability to be working hard, but working on the same things. I mean, there's a difference between working hard and doing the right thing. And then this mm-hmm. has just been such a great moment for us just to make sure that we're aligned on what we can be doing. Um, certain new um, rhythms came about. We actually started uh, you know, for a group of people who make uh, videos that help uh, reveal the Bible as a unified story that leads to Jesus, I wouldn't necessarily say that we were like the best um, praying group together. Like we didn't sure. have like those muscles weren't really well established. Yeah. We started doing a morning prayer time as a staff that was just optional. So every morning at 930, there's this optional Zoom call that people jump into and we yeah, pray so for our staff and our patrons and the churches that are connected to us. And that we've been doing that now for seven weeks, which has just been right. really fun and it's even one of the you know a uh, group of them group of them all at 4 p.m every day do push-ups together on zoom to like, get up and do stuff so some of it is really fun and related to just relational connectivity some of it is really just rooted into our actual beliefs about what we how we're made how we're connected and so i think watching folks try we've iterated a lot of stuff so we've done stuff where we're like hey what, what would this look like how would this work and we've we've had a number of just um you know, in this time of being able to be creative, you have to be a little bit, you can't be afraid to fail. So we've, we've had a lot of ideas. There's been a few things we've launched that are new that, you know, maybe we'll talk about later, but there's just those times where in this season, it just feels like that spark of creativity that I mentioned earlier in the midst of this new scenario, new situation, um, just figuring out how do we do life as best we can in the midst of this, while there are people who are you know, we all have had family members or people that we know that have gotten sick and we know people who've lost their jobs. And, uh, you know, even just like we've we've looked at these ways to spark generosity within the staff of like, hey, when you hear about a need, let people know and maybe other people will join you in helping meet those needs personally with neighbors and friends. And there's been fun things like that. But in the midst of this, you know, I like to call it challenging because for some people, especially introverts, they're, they're doing pretty well. And then there's other people that, yeah. that have real, you know, that have loved ones who are in the hospital, they have things that are happening. And so, yep. I, you know, I heard it said last week in a webinar, of, it's a storm, but a lot of us are in different boats and they're not all hmm. really equal in this moment. And so I think that the idea that as we adapt, we're looking about how we do it together, how we're pushing in the same direction and how yep. we're all as a team um, united in the mission. That's really good. You asked some really incisive questions in there too, you know, how, your organization and many others, I'm sure, are having to ask of themselves, who are we as an organization? What's really important to us? What are our priorities? These things that we might just sort of gloss over or take for granted or assume in normal circumstances, but right now, you kind of have to make those things clear. Mm-hmm. Totally. No, you're, and, and, and I, I actually feel like these are the moments that, you know, if you, if you, 
if you had a healthy team, you'll find out about it now. If you didn't have an yeah. unhealthy, if you, if you had none, you know, like a lot of things get exposed. I think values get exposed in these moments. Sure. I think missions get exposed in these moments. And so I think that these type of situ situations really are um, moments that reveal a lot of what's going on underneath the surface. And some of it you need to change and then other parts of it you get to celebrate yep. and say, this is so cool to see the foundation that's been laid that now gets to just adapt and be used in this new manner. Yep. Totally. Well, I'm curious to hear from you what what you think might be the long term positive impact of all of this change that we're seeing now. You know, I th I think many of us are right to assume that it's not going to be three six months from now we just forget about it. You know, everything is back to normal. But there could be some long term implications, even for the better. Do you have any perspective on what those might be? Um, I mean, just you know, from uh, anecdotally, I I think that we're all experiencing a version of simplicity that I think resonates with a lot of our souls that yeah. um, not to say that, not to say that the things and the things that we're missing out on were bad, but a lot of the times there were things that we were adding that actually, when you add more and more and more, it began to actually have more impact on the negative when you compound it yeah. all together. And so I think that there's a part of the simplicity that some folks are actually really resonating with. Um, and so while you might look online and see like, you know, whether or not people are like learning how to bake bread or they're putting together puzzles or they're, you know, checking off these books that they've never read off their to-do list. Yeah. I think that there's this idea at the end of the day that it's possible that we were a little too busy. Um, that it's possible yep. that we'd filled our schedules to the point where we were doing everything we could do. And it actually wasn't necessarily feeding our souls in a way that's great. There's a part of this that has felt, um, like almost like a, this sounds weird, but it almost feels like a sabbatical of times where everything's sure. just kind of on a break yeah. and yeah. we're all at home and everybody who experienced FOMO, you don't, have to, you don't have to experience that right now yeah. because you're not missing out on anything. Nobody's nothing. having a better time than you are right now. Yeah. You know, there's not a party you didn't get invited to, you know, all those things. And so I think part of that simplicity, I think is really big. Um, I think the emphasis on like, what do we need to do? Like what, like what is the actual core essence of what we need to do, yeah. I think becomes really important. Um, and I also think right now, um, I heard somebody say the other day, somebody that I wouldn't necessarily have thought this from, that just said, man, I can't wait to, get, to give a hug again. I can't yeah. wait to just be connected again. And so I think for a lot of people, relationships, they knew relationships were important. But yeah. I think we're really going to have a deeper appreciation for relationships. I think we're going to give, I think for a, a long time, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to hug a little bit differently. It's going to feel a little bit more special. We're going to greet, we're going to be together in rooms and it's not just going to feel like anything that you could, you know, happen. I mean, there's, you know, there's a season that a lot of the church celebrate called Lent where you remove something that could be good just to be able to, to enter into that season of, of, of Christ's suffering. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of things that we've pulled away that as we enter back into it, my other hope is that we have become a more grateful people. We become a people yes. that don't just take these things for granted and that actually really do see these things as blessings that we get to celebrate every day. So that simplification, that generosity, um, as well as just a real return um, on, on relationships. I think you're spot on with those. That's so good and can definitely relate to some of those personally. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ken. Yeah. Well, just lastly here, is there any, any way that you even personally have changed things up or innovated that you are seeing a benefit from right now? Something you're trying a little bit differently than normal? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think for a lot of us, we've just realized, you know, I mean, from as a person to organizationally, we've all had to kind of go like, wait, what's the actual goal? What are we trying to do? So, you know, there's some things organizationally that we used to do that we'd say, oh, this is the way that that always happens that now we're looking at differently. You know, we started, um, the Bible Project started this initiative called Church at Home, where all of a sudden we're putting out these emails that helps all these smaller churches to be able to have a digital experience that they yeah. could have kind of hand fed to them. And that's been really fun. And it's exciting to see higher open rates than ever and more email, you know, uh, folks, you know, subscribing more than ever. People and that's been like this that, fun, sure. yeah. yeah, this fun new initiative. It was, it was more to really help smaller churches that might not yeah. be able to, I mean, if there's a lot of churches that have, you know, have staffs that are putting together these amazing programs, but there's a lot of folks that that was not their forte. They didn't have anybody, they don't have like a developer on staff that can just yeah. develop out these experiences. So that felt like fun for us to be able to dive in and help, help serve something up in this season. I think also personally, it's just been fun to be able to 
Um, I've, I've tried, I've tried to replace the amount of time I used to be in the car with the amount of time that I'm now, um, walking. And so I got yeah. walking more than ever. Nice. Uh, you know, my kids tease me cause I moved to the metric system cause I like being able to count higher numbers. And so they're like, how far did you walk? And I'm like, I said, 5k, um, not five miles, 5k. And they're like, nice. I metric over, over uh, quarantine. And so there's just, there's little fun things, but, um, but things like prayer, things like more time reading, yeah. uh, the amount of times, because screens are available to us all the time, having a concerted effort of time that we're not in front of a screen each day, so an hour of non-screen time, that, that, didn't, that didn't seem like a really big priority to us before. Yeah. But nowadays, that feels, it, it, an hour of no screen time feels like three hours. Totally with you there. Ken, that's so good. Thanks for sharing your perspective and just what you guys are seeing in the Bible Project right now. Love what you're doing and love just catching up with you and Hearing that you're staying afloat in the season for one, glad to hear that. Yeah. And taking along some just really uh, wise gleanings along the way. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks again, Ken. Thank thanks you. everyone else for just watching and checking out Equip and Engage and particularly following along with See the Good. We'll be back with more episodes, more interviews just like this. We're hearing from other folks just like Ken who are seeing some really remarkable stories and learning some really awesome things in the midst of this season. So thank you. Thank you, Ken. We'll catch you all next time. Thanks for tuning in to Equip and Engage, where we're sharing insights learned from thousands of conversations with leaders and pastors around the world. To follow along with these conversations, subscribe today or visit our website.